and this is the last part of the sedimentary rock the characteristic of sedimentary rock okay so we need to understand the characteristic of sedimentary rock the uses of the sedimentary rock and also the importance knowledge of sedimentary rock in civil engineering All right engineering so the characteristic of sedimentary rock can be based on the texture and the compositions and the particle size can also based on the fossil fossilizations the based on the layer or the stratifications based on the color and also can be based on the porosity and also can be based on the sedimentary structure this is the most common use in the sedimentary structure and also the texture okay so color based on the texture normally for the clastic sedimentary rock okay so again we have three types of sedimentary clastic organic and biochemical and also we have the chemical okay so for the clastic sedimentary normally it classify according to their texture or the green size and detrital sama juga dengan plastic so the texture or the plastic texture we have the coarse medium um, fine ataupun very fine with the name of gravel sand silt and clay so show as as you can see in the table we have the common rock name for the detrital or the plastic sedimentary rock we have the conglomerate we have the brescia we have the sandstone arcos siltstone and also the shale or the mudstone okay so this is the common um, classifications of plastic sedimentary rock and beside that we also have the fossil and sometimes sedimentary rock can be identified through their fossil okay? um, but normally the fossil is used as an indicator for the environments of the depositions eh, kat mana they deposited and also that the fossil also will give clues to relative age of the sediments okay? because life has evolved so the geologists commonly use fossil to estimate the age of the sediment okay? and also as an indicator of the past climate alright if you can see the floor of the fossil the dinosaur collapses and dies and it will leave their footprints eh, in the mud and the flesh rot away the bones remain eh? their punya bones akan remains and due to the climate change and eh, the weather change the water level rises so the sediments from the bone study eh, akan buris okay and then the thick sequence of the sediment accumulates over the bones eh? there are sediment layer another sediment layer yang accumulate uh, menutupi eh, overlying the uh, animal bone study ok so this bed bahagian yang bawah ni ok contain the dinosaur bones <coughs> then the erosion Okay, so due to time this process obviously of course will take the longer time okay? um, can be hundred thousand years can up to billion years okay? that the erosion will expose the layer of strata the layer of uh, layer eh? lapisan yang containing the bones and the footprints of the dinosaur yang dah collapses and dies uh, uh, years years uh, uh, ago all right so this is an example eh? a 50 million year of mammal fossil eh? uh, dekat germany and also we have another 150 million year old um, also in the germany eh? in the limestone of germany the imprints of the feather eh? okay so actually the sedimentary rock are the one types which can contain fossil another rock like igneous rock metamorphic rock takkan ada yang ada fossil the only sedimentary rock yang akan ada uh, contain fossil
fossil because sedimentary rock formation of sedimentary rock is on uh, on the earth's surface okay under the water still maknanya di atas permukaan bumi bukan deep down macam igneous rock eh? at a very low temperature and pressure dia tak memerlukan temperature yang tinggi macam uh, igneous rock ada lava yang magma in hot temperature and also nanti masa tengok metamorphic rock dia perlukan temperature dan pressure yang tinggi but then uh, sedimentary tidak eh? so in other words that the biosphere biosphere kawasan yang benda living things can only interact with the sediment <coughs> And beside fossil, sometimes sedimentary rock, sedimentary rock also can be identified through the colors. Okay, the color will indicate the the presence of oxygen or the presence of other mineral or the presence of the carbon. For example, the dark grey to black color means low oxygen conditions. Okay, maknanya banyaklah carbon. Okay. Normally in deep water eh, Air yang dalam But could be also in the swamp environment Compare with the uh, Green color also eh, In the kawasan yang quite shallow uh, Low or lacking oxygen okay. And then for the ferric iron That produce the red, purple and yellow colors Normally indicate the presence of the iron and the red color mean well oxygen environments eh? such as river channel uh, channel channel some flat plains and very shallow marine eh? kawasan yang oksigen banyak maknanya yang close to the atmosphere permukaan uh, air so you can see the variety of the color eh? the reddish color the grey color, the light color and the brownish color alright, this is the least indicator lah to classify the sedimentary rock okay. and the last one is the sedimentary structure eh? uh, the common commonly used uh, to identify the sedimentary rock is based on the sedimentary structure the sedimentary structure is normally in layering system Okay, they akan ada layer system. The the layer it depends whether in the arrangements of the grains, okay, ataupun uh, any other features yang on the layers. Okay, the terms of layers sometimes used as a strata, stratified ataupun strata. Okay, arranged in uh, plana close to horizontal beds. Uh, the layers by layer also known as a bed bedding okay uh, the bed is uh, often similar in composition color and texture satu-satu layer dia akan ada composition yang sama color and texture there are few types of uh, sedimentary structure uh, the first one is the cross bedding and the layers that cross to each other Uh, the inclination relative to one another the beds are inclined in the direction that the wind or water eh? um, the inclination will be based on the directions of the wind and water that moving during the deposition time yeah? so again perkara ni dah jadi billion or million years ago eh? so apa yang kita nampak adalah yang macam ni lah ok You can see that this is the cross bedding punya cross section ataupun diagram. So you can see that ada inclinations in layering kat sini. Okay. <coughs> ada inclination. So it's actually the base on the arah ataupun directions of wind ataupun direction of wave. Okay. Uh, ataupun direction of water during that time. Okay, this is the cross bedding, and we also have the graded bedding. So the graded bedding is common in turbidity current deposit, eh, kawasan yang ada arus. As current velocity decrease, the surface, the larger or the more dense particle akan deposited. The 
the heavier particles akan deposited dulu and then followed by the finest so normally the heavier the largest akan duduk dekat bottom and then the finest akan duduk dekat top ok so itu yang akan jadi graded back ok so if you can see here the the larger particles the heavier particles dekat uh, below bottom and this is the medium and the finest is at the top ok as stability current slow eh, so the bila arus tu berkurang so the largest particle akan uh, deposited and settle down dekat bawah so in present time so again this process dah ambil masa lama dulu so untuk masa sekarang apa yang kita nak nampak dia punya bukti is like this lah ok so dia akan susun dalam bentuk layering or the bedding ok yang bawah ni yang size dia agak besar and this one finest and more finest and then again ada arrangements because it come layer by layer eh? time by time dia tak datang serentak tu jadi semua ni sekali it will come layers by layers so the heavier the largest akan settle down first eh? dia akan deposited first so at the end of the day dia akan jadi graded bedding and we also have the ripple marks another sedimentary structure Hmm, characteristic of shallow water depositions eh? so it's indicate that the agitations by water current or wave or wind ok um, this is the rock and you can see that ada bentuk-bentuk um bentuk-bentuk ripple marks ni ok so bila dia kering uh, after years after million years after billion years that shape is remain then dia akan kekal jadi batuan tu and again is actually due to the movements of the sediment eh? the direction is based on the um, current so there are two types asymmetric and symmetric So kalau yang asimetrik Dia akan nampak dia satu arah Macam ni So kalau yang asimetrik Nampak dia Symmetrical eh? Dia akan Symmetric Macam ni Okay And then The last one is the mud crack The mud crack is the result From the drawing out of wet sediment The clearage sediment eh Um, just imagine like uh, tanah liat tu bila dia tu dry dia akan crack in the head polygon bentuk-bentuk polygon macam ni ok due to drying uh, conditions eh, dalam keadaan dia kering so dia akan shrink eh, dia akan shrink um, as it dries eh. so the cracks ni crack yang ada ni terjadi due to the shrinkage tadi so all the cracks ni later boleh broken up eh, disebabkan oleh water movement nanti ok so if you can see here dia akan produce crack kat sini ok normally sediment that have the clay rich sediment ok So in the present time, okay, inilah batu dia Yang you boleh nampak ada kesan-kesan mud crack On the surface of the rock And then the uses of the sedimentary rock Okay, it's not specifically only in civil engineering But also another uses eh, As construction material, obviously Kalau dalam civil engineering yang banyak We have sand gravel that we use as the construction aggregates Okay So we have um, aggregates, different sizes eh, for the constructions. Eh. We have the limestone. That limestone akan menghasilkan simin. So simin uh, mixed with the aggregates, mixed with the water, dia akan jadi concrete. Also the silt, sewage filter, clay, dam, seepage, blanket, eh, clay sebagai si, uh, dam blanket. 
and we also can use it for the gypsum cement industry ataupun plaster this is the gypsum gypsum board and normally kita gunakan sebagai drywall eh? ini adalah gypsum drywall hmm, silica eh? silica yang ada dalam sand eh? sand ada composition of silica yang tinggi and also for example for the chemical resources halite, salts eh? uh, gypsum ada sulfur, uh, nitrate eh? untuk kita gunakan dalam chemical usage and also for the fossil untuk dapatkan age evidence eh? the age evidence of the fossil or of the sediment to be specific in construction of civil engineering why we need to know uh, the knowledge of the sedimentary rock okay. um, yeah, the horizontal bedded sandstone and limestone are suitable for excavations because the sandstone are not really hard and it's quite easy to excavate and then um, to cut the slope mana-mana slope yang nampak tak stable eh, kita boleh jadikan dia more flat slope and the bedding planes are the weaknesses of planes sebenarnya uh, any plane yang bentuk-bentuk line-line -bentuk, oh, yang layer-layer yang nampak cantik tu is actually adalah plane of weaknesses maksudnya kalau you nak potong ataupun nak cut the slope or any other constructions like uh, tunneling we need to be very careful with the layering tu sebab dia mudah untuk collapse and also the limestone a limestone um, due to the CaCO3 dia mudah untuk uh, evaporate dia react dengan groundwater so dia boleh menghasilkan cavities ataupun aroma, menghasilkan kekosongan pada soil yang ada elemen limestone ok uh, for example is the sinkhole eh? mana-mana elemen or mana-mana site or mana-mana soil that have limestone ataupun CaCO3 bila ada dissolve mineral eh, bila ada dissolve mineral ataupun acid from the hujan ok, dia akan infiltrate masuk kat dalam ni once dia infiltrate masuk dia akan buka jalan for the limestone ni so kat bawah ni rongga ni akan start mula kosong ok, kalau you tengok slowly dia create cavities so ini yang kita panggil cavity jalan gigi berlubang cavities ok, so bila sini kosong so dekat atas ni tak kuat eh, dia boleh menyebabkan settlement pada tanah yang di permukaan so all the soil ni akan collapse sama juga eh, kalau contoh highway dekat jalan ni, eh, mana tiba-tiba jadi sinkhole, eh, acidic rainwater tu dia akan infiltrate eh, so underneath of the ground surface Eh, mana, especially yang mana ada limestone ok so reactions antara limestone dengan groundwater tu menghasil, menyebabkan berlakunya cavities erosion kat dalam ni ok so when sini dia dah kosong there is no support underneath kat bawah jalan ni so that jalan tu boleh collapse ok so this is very dangerous So that's why before any construction we need to identify whether what kind of what kind of rock yang ada kat situ. Kalau limestone we need to be very careful. And then make sure that there is no sinkhole below the proposed site. And because in future inilah akan jadi kalau kita tak detect the sinkhole earlier. Alright. Okay, that's all for the sedimentary rock.